Hi, I'm Joyce O'Shaughnessy, breast medical oncologist at Baylor University Medical Center, Texas Oncology and U.S. Oncology in Dallas, Texas. And I've been taking care of patients with breast cancer, I think it's 37 years now, and it is gratifying to see the progress that we've made in increasing the cure rate, keeping patients without evidence of recurrence with early HR positive HER2 negative breast cancer uh, in the time I've been taking care of patients. So we've transitioned for everyone getting tamoxifen, who was estrogen receptor positive, to the advances with aromatase inhibitors, improving overall survival in meta-analysis, the very important data from soft and text in the premenopausal women adding the LHRH agonist to tamoxifen or to an aromatase inhibitor, the more severe high risk of disease, the more the survival improves with um, an, an aromatase inhibitor plus, CD, plus an LHRH agonist versus tamoxifen with an LHRH agonist. So that's been a big advance for our premenopausal patients. And most recently, we had the FDA approval of the first CDK4-6 inhibitor in the adjuvant setting, abemacyclib, for two years in a very high risk population, node positive patients, four or more lymph nodes positive, anyone, or one to three lymph nodes positive if they have one of three characteristics, either T3, T4, or grade three, or a key 67, 20% or higher. Two years of abemacyclib is substantially improving invasive disease-free survival and distant disease-free survival with a median follow-up uh, with four-year landmark analysis. It's about a uh, 6.5% improvement in invasive disease-free survival, absolute improvement, and about a 6% absolute improvement in distant disease-free survival. Um, and the main toxicity is diarrhea. So we just have to make sure patients know about that. Use low paramide, eat a bland diet for the first three or four weeks so that they can take a bemacyclib. Once they get used to it, it's really not, a, not difficult at all for patients. Once they're used to it, the diarrhea abates very substantially. But this is a very, very important advance for our patients with high risk node positive disease. So these are the, some of the main advances we've seen in the adjuvant setting in our high risk HR positive HER2 negative population. But in the last five to eight years or so, we've had a, a bunch of inhibitors of resistance pathways to endocrine therapy be approved and really useful, uh, changing the landscape of um, HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, most notably the CDK4-6 inhibitors, which really have changed and improved overall survival in the first line setting with median progression-free survivals over two years and median survival of more than five years. These are dramatic improvements in the first line landscape. Ribocyclib has the most data in terms of impacting favorably overall survival. Also available, abemacyclib and palbocyclib. Very, very uh, important. But we have other inhibitors of resistance pathways to endocrine therapy inhibition. In inhibitors of the PI3 kinase pathway. We have Everolimus, the mTOR inhibitor, and we have Alpelisib, the PI3 kinase inhibitor. We hope to have by the end of the year, we hope to have an AKT inhibitor, Capivacertib. This is a very important resistance pathway that can really increase the efficacy of endocrine therapy and put off the day when a woman has to transition to chemotherapy. And these very substantially improve progression-free survival. We just had FDA approval of the first oral CERD and the first inhibitor of estrogen receptor mutations, ESR1 mutations. Heretofore, we just hadn't had anything that was really effective against the ESR1 mutations, and now we have oral l another very important option that we can give second line to patients with more indolent endocrine therapy sensitive breast cancer, or second line we could use an inhibitor such as alpelisib for those PIK3CA mutant or everolimus, and hopefully by the end of the year, capivacertib. And there's a little bit of data, phase two data, that switching from 
one CDK4-6 inhibitor to a different one can also be an option for patients before the day comes that they have to start chemotherapy. So dramatic improvements uh, in patients. Also our diagnostics are getting better. We can use circulating tumor DNA to find PIK3CA mutations and AKT mutations and ESR1 mutations and HER2 mutations, things that we can really help patients with, again, to try to keep them uh, away from chemotherapy for as long as we possibly can. But most importantly, we've really dramatically improved survival, um, uh, certainly in the time that I've been uh, taking care of best breast cancer patients.